Okay, so in the last section, we discussed how to use the HAL in standalone mode. At this point of the demonstration, we're going to add another element to the test procedure, and we're going to introduce you to our Safety eBase Pro software. Safety eBase Pro has been designed to work with any of the current HAL series of testers, and it adds an additional layer of functionality and uh, data safety to the, uh, to the mix. So we're going to talk briefly about the features that Safety eBase brings, along with the different levels of configuration and features that we can add to the, uh, to the overall experience. So let's firstly talk about users. I'm going to quickly come to the login screen. You'll notice we have two users currently. We have an engineer level user. Now the engineer level user allows for all of the configuration of the software. So that includes creating test sequences, where the data will be stored, new users, as well as general kind of functionality that, that we may want to program within the software. Incidentally, when using the software, there's very little programming that needs to happen within the HAL itself. Um, essentially, we just need the product to start up in what we call remote mode, ready to be configured. From here on out, Safety eBase takes care of all of the, uh, the configuration. We also then have our operator mode um, of login. Now, an operator is there purely for testing purposes, so there's no access to any configuration. There are no changes that can be made. It's simply a vessel to perform the testing. Firstly, we're going to discuss creating new users within Safety eBase. As I mentioned before, we have two levels of user. We have our engineer and then we have operators. We only have one login for the engineer and that's created as part of the setup procedure. Uh, but new users can be added at, at any point and also deleted at any point. So we're going to add a new operator in this case. Uh, simply, we can create a new user. Now, one of the key advantages that Safety eBase gives us over users within the HAL itself is the ability to password protect that user login. So we can simply add a new user in. And if we want to give that user a password. Now, at any point of logging in, that user will be prompted for a password, giving you extra security that the person doing the test is the person that you want to, to be performing the test. The next feature we're going to look at is our um, part number to test sequence mapping. So one of the key advantages that we can do with the um, Safety eBase software is really take the choice away from the operator about exactly what test sequence they should be performing for a particular product. Now we do that by simply adding and applying a part number to a test sequence. So we simply tell the software that part number one, two, three belongs to test sequence A. And at the point of performing the test, Safety eBay simply asks the operator for some basic information. What's the part number? And by telling the software what the part number is, the software automatically then uses the um, lookup table that we create. And if there is a part number associated with a test sequence, it will automatically load that test sequence ready for use. So it really takes that choice away from the operator, again, ensuring that the product being tested is being tested to the exact method that, that is required um, by, by the standard, for example. So let's have a quick look at that field. So you'll see here now we have a couple of options in terms of choices. So we can decide to only use a serial number, in which case the operator is responsible for choosing the correct test sequence. And then we can invoke part numbers. And for this demonstration, we're going to talk about part number and serial number. Now, what this means is that the operator will be asked for two pieces of information before the start of every test, a part number and a serial number. As I mentioned, the part number will be used to call up a test sequence. And the serial number is the part that we can use to create a unique reference for that particular product being tested at that time. So we've said that we want to use part numbers. Now all we need to do is start to assign the part numbers to test sequences. So we've already created one. You'll see here that part number 1234 is associated with test sequence number two, and that exists in the list. I'm going to add a further one in. So part number ABCD is assigned to any of our available and created test sequences. So in this case, test sequence one, and I can now add that into the list. Click the OK key, and that's then stored within a lookup table. So anytime that we are prompted for a part number, 
and we scan in A, B, C, D, safety based software will automatically load up test sequence one. Okay, so we've now created a test sequence. We can define certain other aspects like what happens in the event that a product fails. We can define whether we restart the test, whether we abort uh, the current test and continue testing or whether we abort all tests and log the unit as a fail. So simply by checking or unchecking, you can define the options available to the operator in the event that the test fails. So we're going to firstly start at the engineer and create some configurations, show you some of the features, and then we'll log in as a user and uh, perform the test. Okay, so firstly, any engineer level user will always have a password associated with it. So we need to log in as, a, as an engineer to, to start configuration. So we're going to start at new, so everything um, from a test sequence point of view is blank, and we'll start to talk you through some of the features. Okay, so here we have our main safety eBase uh, display. All of the settings, file, editing, etc. is taken care of in the left hand, top left hand side, um, and everything else is then displayed in small window panes. So what we're going to do firstly is show you a test sequence. I'm going to open up a test sequence that we already have in place. Uh, let's open up test sequence two. And you can see here we now have a list of tests that the, uh, the engineer level user has already programmed into, into Safety eBase. Now we could add more to that. We could delete tests um, or we could create a whole new test sequence. But let's talk you through one that's already been created. So firstly, you'll see we have our earthbound test. When we click on the test, whether it's new or an existing one, we start to see all of the test sequence settings being displayed over in the right hand side. So at this point, we can do everything that we could have done on the HAL. So you can see we can choose the test type we want to perform. We can define a start condition. We can decide how many times we want to perform the test. And then we can set our test parameters up. So what our output needs to be, how long the test should be performed, our ramp up, hold and ramp down times, as well as our upper and lower limits. So it's a very core base test. You can see there now we have the, um, the test configured. And likewise, if we move to our HIPOT test, again, this is all pre-configured, the parameters are set and so on and so forth into our power and leakage test. So some of the advantages we have when we do create a test sequence, firstly, you'll notice we can add a custom name. So the custom name could be added to simply give the operator a better guide or reference for where the test uh, is needing to be performed. This is particularly useful, for example, if you are using a probe uh, to perform the test. Now, it may be in this case, we're doing an earthbound test. So we need to guide the operator and give them a hint about exactly where we need to place the probe. So if we click the custom name button, we can now edit the name and this will edit the displayed name into the test. So let's, for example, call this Earthbond main screw. So now when the operator is performing the test, they'll get a little hint to say that the Earthbond test should be performed at the, uh, the main screw point. In addition to this, we can actually take this guiding the operators a step further and we can add things such as custom messages to the test. So we're going to quickly demonstrate how a custom message can be used. At the moment, you'll notice we have no um, custom messages added into the test. So we're going to add one at this point. Again, we now want to talk about where we're going to place the probe. So I'm going to add a new test. Now, the best point to add a probe um, hint would be before the test starts. So firstly, we would choose whether or not we want the message to show as a pop up or displayed in the background. If we display it as a pop up before the test starts, the image, uh, along with some text, will pop up in a screen that the opera has to physically press the enter button to move on. However, what we're going to do is display the image in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our test condition. So you can see we can set this before a test, during a test, or after the test is finished, whether that's a pass fail or potentially a user reported condition. So for today, we're going to place before the test. We can then add some text again as a, as a warning or a, a piece of information to the operator. So 
So we've now placed a bit of text, giving them guidance. And we can also bolster that guidance with an image. So we can actually physically take a photo of where the probe should be. Uh, and that photo will be displayed as the operator proceeds through the test sequence. Again, giving them the best guidance of exactly where the test should be uh, performed to. Giving you that confidence that the test is always being repeated in exactly the same way. So let's quickly add a image to our test sequence. And on my desktop, I have a very quick message uh, and, and image that we can place. And you can see now that that condition has been stored and is ready for use. So before the test, we will get the message and it will be displayed with an image. We'll now save that and that image is ready to be used whenever we want the test sequence. Incidentally, all of your test sequences can be stored um, somewhere on the, the PC, or if you wanted to, they could even be stored on the network. So if you wanted that security backup that your test sequences are safe, they can easily be accessed from a, um, a network location, providing the software has access to um, read and write from that location. So everything's saved now, we could go ahead and perform the test. Before we do that, we're going to briefly show you some of the other configuration settings that really help the experience and really help the operator to ensure testing is performed correctly. Okay, so we're now logged in as an operator and you can see that the display looks slightly different. First thing you'll notice is there is a lot less uh, menu options for the operator. They can simply close the application, log out or test an appliance. Other information that's useful for the operator is displayed down in the bottom right hand corner. We can see at all times who's logged in, whether or not there's a connection to the, the test equipment, i.e. the HAL, what serial number is currently being worked on, and also what test sequence is currently being performed. Now, as you can see, in this case, we're on test sequence one, and test sequence one simply consists of an earth bond test. So what we're gonna do now is take you through the process that an operator would do, as they uh, start to perform the test. So, quite simply, they would click the test appliance button for the first time they want to perform the test. Now, this is where things start to get configured exactly how we wanted them from our engineering mode. You'll now see that the software is asking the operator for two bits of information, a part number and a serial number. So the operator is now required to enter those two bits of information. If you have them as a barcode, even better, they can simply be scanned uh, and the system will move on accordingly. But we're just gonna type in our part number and we're gonna type in a serial number. Now what will happen in this case is because our part number is assigned to a different test sequence, as soon as we hit the test appliance button, the test sequence in the background should change and we should load up the correct test sequence for this particular part number. So let's click the test appliance button and you can see instantly now the, uh, the test has been loaded. It's now correct, waiting for the operator to begin the test. So a couple of things to note that we pre-configured earlier. Firstly, you'll notice the name prompt, Earthbond main screw. That was when we created a custom name for this particular test. You'll also notice the image is now being displayed. So we're giving the operator a good prompt to exactly where we want the uh, probe to be placed. And you'll also notice the text information above that we previously entered again at the messaging point. So the test is waiting now to, to perform. You can see we have a display of our graphs, much like we would see on the main display of the HAL. In fact, they are replicated. So these graphs are now being displayed on the HAL and the, the two will kind of display in sync. So let's go ahead and start the test away. Now at the moment, you'll also notice the current test being worked on has a play icon. Anything in the sequence that's currently waiting to be performed has a little clock icon. As the test is completed, if it's passed, we'll get a green flag to symbolize the pass. If for any reason it was to fail, the, uh, the symbol will change to a red X. So let's go ahead and start the test away. The test is now being performed. You can see the graphs. The test passed and therefore it moved on. We'll also see the current state of the test whilst it's under operation, providing everything is good at the end of the test, everything's passed, the operator gets a message to inform them that the test has passed, and quite simply, they can carry on entering the next part number 
and the next serial number. So they never need to come out of this. They can just stay in a constant loop of scanning part numbers and serial numbers and performing testing.